about mandubat salah, sorry. And in mandubat, rahimahullah, mentioned several things, and amongst those things that he mentioned, he said, Sadlu Yadin. Sadlu Yadin. Uh, here, where he says, Ridan wa tasbihu sujudi wa rukur, Sadlu Yadin takbiruhu ma shurur. The wearing of a clock, the saying of subhanAllah during the prostration and the bowing, letting one's arms hang by one's side, saying Allahu Akbar when beginning the removement of the salah. The origin text that talked about sadl al yad, which means putting your two hands besides you and not putting the right hand over the left hand, is that some scholars understood that from al Mudawana. Mudawana, that is written by Suhnun, rahimahullah. Uh, he asked al Imam ibn al Qasim, rahimahullah, about how to pray. So, uh, Ibn al-Qasim started mentioning the prayer according what he got or he understood from Imam Malik rahimahullah tabarak ta'ala. And uh, when he started mentioning that, he made a, a chapter that talks about Babu li'timadi fi salah Li'timad fi salah means to depend on something when you're Standing up or sitting down, etc. And inside this chapter, he talked about uh, that Imam Malik rahimahullah, said that if you're going to put your right hand on your, on your left hand to depend on them so he doesn't like that. But if you did that for other reasons, it doesn't matter. But if it's in the the, the extra prayers, the extra prayers, that means the nawafil. So in that case, he doesn't matter about that. It's not a big deal because normally or usually, scholars differentiate between fara'id and sunan. They differentiate between obligatory prayers, obligatory prayers, and between the extra prayers that you're allowed to do them or not do them. Now, later on, later on, many scholars started supporting this opinion about Sadl. Many others didn't agree about that. That Imam Malik rahimahullah used to put his right hand on his left hand and he he finds that that's Sunnah. And the other kind of followers of Imam Malik are the scholars of Hadith. These guys that are the friends of Imam Malik or the followers of his madhab and that they are scholars of hadith all of them or the majority of them said that it's sunnah to put your right hand on your left hand and that is the opinion of the majority of scholars all the Hanbalis, the Shafi'is, the Hanafis and all others we don't know any of the of the Sahaba or Tabi'een or Atba'at Tabi'een or Aimma that say that Sadl al Yadain is preferred it's preferred than uh, okay sister just let me just let me continue my opinion and then you can say whatever you want to say 
So uh, to say that something is sunnah, you have to support that with a, a strong evidence. And I'm now trying to, uh, I'm trying to give you the this uh, this uh, branch of uh, of fiqh by its evidence and by who said every one of them or else it's up to you to do whatever you believe that is uh, sunnah so to say that it's sunnah that means the prophet sallallahu did it and that means his his big uh, companions did it too and that means the majority of scholars or sahaba and tabi'in did it where imam al hafiz ibn abdul bar al andalusi rahimahullah says that we don't have any of the salaf that it is narrated from them that they used to do sadl and we don't have any of them that we 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 narrate it that or it is narrated from them that they used to do sadl and we have another narration from them that it's that they say that Qabd is Sunnah, except Sa'id ibn Musayyib and Abdullah ibn Zubair. Except Sa'id ibn Musayyib and Abdullah ibn Zubair, these two, uh, the chain to, to them that they used to do Sadl is an authentic chain. But all the others, it's not authentic, or it's it might be authentic, but we have another chain that shows that they used to do Qabd. So, when we see the 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 big companions of Imam Malik and the big followers of his madhab, like the majority of the Iraqis, the Iraqis, the the majority of Egyptians except uh, Ibn Al Qasim, the majority of uh, Moroccans and Andalusians, Maghribians and Andalusians, Tunisian and all these, the majority of them say that Al. Qabd is the Sunnah. Al Imam Ibn Abdul Bar Rahimahullah in his commentary says that the most accepted opinion is that Al Qabd is Sunnah. And then the same thing of Abu Al Walid Al Baji Rahimahullah, the same thing of many other big scholars. And that's why Khalil Rahimahullah, when he mentioned Al Qabd or, or Sadl, Sadl, he said, and why did Imam Malik, why did Imam Malik Rahimahullah, why is the Maliki Madhab, why d does it say Sadl? They say because maybe. He means that you're not supposed to depend on your hands. When you do like that, you're just depending on them. And he says that you're not allowed to depend on anything. The other opinion is that he's afraid that some ignorant people will say that it's oblig obligatory. Obligatory. That means it's per it's, uh, it's you're supposed to do the qabr. The other opinion says that if you do that following the sunnah, so there's no problem about that. All these are on the commentaries of Mukhtasar Khalil. Now, there are many scholars of the Malikis. I'm not talking about only the commentators, because there are commentators that commented on Ibn Ashir, Murshid al Mu'in, like Al Imam or Al Qadi Muhammad al Talib ibn al Hajj al Sulami, who passed in the year 1274. He was a, a great judge in in Marrakesh. Now, can you hear me? Is there any voice? Can you hear me? Okay. Al Qadi. Shaykh Muhammad Talib ibn al-Hajj rahimahullah in his commentary on al-Murshid al his hashiyah on Mayar al-Saghir he supports the opinion that says that al-Qabd 
is the Sunnah. More than that, Al-Qadi Iyad, in his beautiful book, Al-Ilam Qawad Islam, he mentions from the Sunnah of the Salah, Al-Qabd. He says that Al-Qabd is one of the Sunnahs that you are asked to do in your prayer. And even, what do they say? They say, where is the place where you put your right hand on your left hand? They say it's over the nivel and under the chest. So these are great Imams. There are other Imams that started writing books about this. And their books were because they started calling to follow the Sunnah and to leave to leave what is only opinion that is not supported by Sunnah. Let us see now what do the ones the ones who support the opinion that Sadl is the Sunnah or it's Sunnah or some some started saying that both of them are Sunnah. Now uh Now, uh, l- there is a narration narrated by Abu Humayd al-Sa'id radiallahu anhu, which he mentions how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to pray. It's a long hadith. What he says there, he says that uh, that. Uh, I'm the most knowledgeable one amongst you that knew how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to pray. How did he used to pray? They told him, and they told him that were, there there were about ten companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, like Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu, Abu Hamid Sa'id, and others. They told him, "Well, how are you saying that? How are you saying that?" He said. By Allah, I wasn't. I wasn't one of the ones that were always with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I wasn't one of the old companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah, they told him actually. By Allah, you weren't one of the old companions, nor one of the ones that were always with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So how can you say? He said yes. They told him, "Okay, just show us how did he used to pray." He said, "The Prophet, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, used to raise up his hands until they're close to his to his shoulders when he starts praying. Then he says, 'Allahu Akbar,' until every bone stop is put in its place." Then he starts reciting, yeah. Uh, then he starts reciting. Then he says Allahu Akbar. So he raises up his hand <coughs> until he puts them near his uh, shoulders again. Then he bows down and he puts his palms on his knees. Then he sits down, etc. It's a long hadith. Now this hadith, I think that the first one who mentioned this hadith as an evidence of the sadl is either Sheikh Al Mahdi Al Wazani, Muhammad Al Mahdi Al Wazani, in his big encyclopedia, uh, which is called Al Mi'yar Al Jadid, and he has in that book, uh, it's a it's a huge book, eleven volumes. And he has inside it a book, uh, uh, a book that is talking about Sadl. And another one is Sheikh Muhammad Al Khadr Ibn Mayaba Al Shingiti, who wrote a book called Ibram Al Naqd Lima Qila Min Arjahiyat Al Qabd. These two mentioned this hadith. This hadith is not an evidence. Totally, is not an evidence. For the book of Al Mahdi. Uh, Sheikh Al Hadi Kittani Rahimullah wrote a book against that book. That book is called 
البحر المتلاطم الأمواج في حول في سنة القبض من اللجاج It's a huge volume And he talked a lot inside this book And he mentioned a lot of evidence of uh, that Qabd is Sunnah And for the book of Muhammad al-Khadr al-Shangiti Al-Shaykh al-Hafiz Ahmad ibn al-Siddiq al-Ghumari rahimahullah wrote a book in a huge volume too and he said that it's supposed to be in two volumes this book is called Al-Mathnawni wal-Battar fi Nahr al-Anid al-Mi'thar al-Ta'in fi ma sahha min al-Sunnah al-Athar okay it's it's a very harsh name and uh, it's a very interesting book where he started following every word in the book of Sheikh Muhammad al-Khadr and showing that there is no evidence about about al uh, about sadl. Before these, we have a great Moroccan Imam called Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Masnawi. He wrote a book. He was he passed in the year one thousand one hundred thirty-six Hijri. Where he wrote a very interesting book called Nusrat al Qabd wa Raddu ala man ankar mashru'iyyatahu fi salat al Fard. This book is called Nusrat al Qabd, and he mentioned all the evidence of al Qabd. And after that, by a few centuries, we're going to get one of the great Imams of Morocco is Al-Imam Muhammad ibn Ja'far al-Kittani rahimahullah my grand-grandfather the grandfather of my grandfather he was one of the great Imams of Morocco and he went to the east and he came back after about 18 years and he passed died in Fez, Fez. he lived in Medina he lived in Damascus he wrote a very interesting book called uh Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad As-Sabeelu al-Wadih As-Sabeelu al-Wadih Fi anna al-Qabd Fi madhhab al-Imam Malik Mashhoorun wa rajih Mashhoor wa rajih He proved that al-Qabd Is inside madhhab al-Imam Malik It's not only an opinion In the madhhab It is mashhoor and rajih And the other opinion is not mashhur. And he started discussing about that. And his cousin, a Shaykh, Al Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Kabir Kittani, who passed in the year three, uh, 1370, uh, 1327 Hijri, in Fez, he wrote another book. In the same topic called uh, uh, I forgot this, the name but it's it, it, he proves that Al-Qabd is it's Sunnah inside the Madhab and outside the Madhab and uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Ibn Ja'far Al-Kittani the brother of Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Ja'far wrote a long poem supporting the opinion of the Qabd. And there are many scholars of Shangib, which is more than one asana fi dhab an asana, the Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abi Madian, Shangib rahimahullah. And he depended a lot on the book of Sidi Muhammad ibn Jafar al Kittani rahimahullah. Another scholar of Tunisia, which was one of the great scholars of the Ottoman Empire in Istanbul. His name is Al Allama Imam Muhammad Al Makki ibn Azuz. He wrote a very interesting book called. Uh, he was actually talking about uh, a Meccan scholar, Maliki Meccan scholar called Muhammad Hussein ibn Abid, uh, Muhammad Abid ibn Hussein uh, Al Makki. 
who wrote a book supporting a sadl and he wrote against his book a book called Dli Hayatun Nasik Hayatun Nasik Fi Anna Al Qabda Sunnatun Fi Madhabi Malik Hayatun Nasik Fi Anna Al Qabda Sunnatun Fi Madhabi Malik It's published, this book is published. The majority of these books are published and some of them are going to be published. So now, <laughs> yani, when they say here that Al-Qabd is uh, Al-Medina, how can you say Amal Ahl Medina? What do you mean Amal Ahl Medina? The majority of the Medinians of not the other scholars Not the, 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 the colleagues of Imam Malik. No, the Imam Malik. They used to say Qabd is Sunnah, not Sadl. They used to do Qabd. They didn't use to do Sadl. How can you say Ahl Medina? That's not true. Totally it's not true. And al Hafiz Ahmad ibn Siddiq says that there is no hadith talk, that talks about Sadl. But there are about 18 hadith, 18 narrations that support Qabd. Some of them are authentic in Bukhari and Muslim, and, and, and one of them is in, in Muttal Imam Malik. And the others are in, in other books of Sunnah. So, this is why many scholars, many great scholars, of the followers of Imam Malik or companions of Imam Malik that between the two opinions and we find that one of without the names the names like Abu Bakr ibn Arabi like Abu Walid ibn Rushd who is a great leader in Maliki Madhab like Ibn Abdul Salam, Tunisian, like Al Qadi Ayyad, like Ibn Juzay Al Kalbi, like Al Imam Al Qarafi, these are the great scholars. Of who, these are the great. These are the pillars of the Maliki, uh, the Maliki school. Look, Al Qadi Ayyad says in Ikmal Al uh, Ikmal Ikmal Al Mu'lim, which is a commentary on Sahih Muslim. There are authentic narrations that the Prophet ﷺ used to do the Qabd. And that he used to ask us to do the Qabd too. Al-Masnawi, uh, Muhammad al-Masnawi, rahimahullah, says in his book that I just mentioned for you right now, he says, there are many things that support the Qabd, like that the evidence is strong, the evidence is strong, and that the majority of scholars said that the Qabd is Sunnah. And from these evidence, I'm going to mention for you four evidence that support Al Qabd. And actually, this means people don't talk about it anymore until I discovered that there are many people now supporting Sadl again. You know, amongst the Islam, who are the ones that support Al-Sadl? The Shia, the Zaydis, the Ibadis, these are the three groups of, of people out of Sunnah that support Sadl. But inside the Sunni schools, the totally majority scholars talk about Al-Qabd. And there are lots of evidence about that. One of them is what Sahl ibn Sa'd al-Sa'idi radiyallahu anhu said, كَانَ النَّاسُ يُؤْمَرُونَ أَنْ يَضَعَ الرَّجُلُ يَدَهُ الْيُمْنَ عَلَى ذِرَائِهِ الْيُسْرَى This is in Al-Muatta and Bukhari and Muslim. People used to be ordered. Not only the Prophet ﷺ did that, he used to order them to put the right hand on the left hand in the prayer. 
عبد الكريم بن ابي المخارق ابو اميه البصري سد من كلام النبوة الأولى إذا لم تستحي فاصنع ما شئت ووضع اليدين إحداهما على الأخرى في الصلاة يضع اليمنى على اليسرى From the words from the prophetical the prophetical words the ancient prophetical words if you don't be shined so do whatever you want and putting the two hands over each other the right hand over the left hand this hadith is in Muwatta of Imam Malik rahimahullah Qabisat ibn Hulb narrated that his father said that the Prophet the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam used to be our Imam so he puts his right hand, he takes his right, his left hand by his right hand. That means he puts them over each other. This hadith is in Ibn Majah and Tirmidhi. And he said it's hadith al Hasan. Wa'il ibn Hujr radiallahu anhu said that he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raising up his hand when he enters the prayer. And he says, Allahu Akbar. Then he puts his garment on him. Then he puts his right hand on his left hand. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim. And there are a lots of other hadith that are mentioned in the books that I just mentioned for you right now. Now... Now let me after mentioning all these ahadith. This is anyway not obligatory. That means you're not supposed to, you're not forced to put your right hand on your left hand. And if you don't do it, it doesn't affect your prayer. It's not something that we're gonna fight about. It's not something that we're gonna make it as the problem of the world. It's not something that we're gonna the, the, we're, we're going to curse each other about we're going to boycott each other about that no that's totally wrong and what I find that many of our brothers and sisters take these small things and start fighting with them and start making them as a sign of their group well this guy does said no this guy does cult. no this guy does I don't know what this guy does so and so and then People start dividing themselves to groups instead of loving each other, instead of being one group of Muslims. All of us are Muslims. All of us, alhamdulillah, follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu All of us love the, the Prophet sallallahu companions. All of us follow the great imams that all of us respect. All of us respect Imam Abu Hanifa. All of us respect Imam Malik, Shafi, Ahmed Muhammad. And all these scholars. And all of us respect all our scholars that, that sat, sacrificed themselves. And suffered to write all these huge books. Commenting on the, the Quran and the Sunnah. And show us, showing us the truth. And showing us how to follow our beloved Prophet This is what we believe. And this is what we have to believe and we have to show everybody. We don't we believe that there is no one of our great scholars that alhamdulillah everybody respects that they meant to uh, go against the Prophet. That's impossible. We believe that the scholars that were pious, that were that were righteous, that were on the right path. And that were sacrificing themselves, giving all their time to teach people, to write books for people, to say the truth and maybe put in prison, get killed 
in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we believe that all these scholars are our imams we don't divide our these imams and say well this guy is our, my imam this is not my imam what are what people are doing now nowadays it's it's something that is shameful when we find this guy saying well I don't follow this imam because he's a shari And I don't follow this imam because all these imams were trying their best to follow the Prophet Like what Al Busiri said in his Burda, Wa kulluhum min Rasulillahi multamisun rashfam min al Bahri aw gharfam min al Diyami. All of them, they say, he says, all of them. are taking from the messenger of Allah some of them is taken from uh, taken from the sea some of them is taken from a river all of them take from they're making their best okay of course there are some astray scholars or so called scholars and uh, we're not talking about those and those aren't the imams that wrote books and uh, have people following them and great fuqaha and something like that. No. I just wanted to say that because I found that when you follow the internet, the Facebook, the uh, and you read the books and stuff like that, you find a huge battle between Muslims. Where actually we are asked to be one nation, not divide ourselves. This is your one nation, and I'm your Lord. So fear me. Uh, and this, or in the end of this uh, topic, uh, this commentary of Sheikh Muhammad Al Amrawi, the Moroccan scholar that wrote al mubin al murshid al muin he mentioned a word of al imam ibn abd al bar rahimahullah where he says and what i say asking allah to help me is that the differences between scholars in the tashahhud and in adhan and in iqama and the numbers of saying allah akbar in the funeral prayer and what you read and what you invoke in the funeral prayer and saying salam to get out of the prayer one or two or three or one or two and putting the right hand on the left hand or leaving your two hands down and doing qunuts or not doing qunuts all these are differences differences between something that is permissible no one said that this is no one the majority of scholars never said that this is forbidden and this is forced you are are forced to do so and so or you are, it's really to so. it's like making ablution wudu one or two or three this is what he said in the sitkar but actually what i say and what the majority of scholars say is that no it's not like that there is difference between talking about ikhtilaf tanawwar that is all sunnah and that no you're trying to say what is the most acceptable opinion and you might make a mistake so i believe that when we're talking about this topic we're talking about al-qabd that is sunnah because there are evidence that support it where a sadl nothing supports it at all totally but it's an opinion that you can find in islamic books it's something that some of the sahaba did like abdullah ibn zubayr and like from the tabi'in uh said musayyib and it's an opinion that some scholars 
support, even in Awzai, huh? They say that Imam Awzai and Laith ibn Sa'd, from the great Imams, they they say that the, the Sadl is, uh, they choose Sadl too. So, in the end of this uh, topic, this is what I think, Wallahu tabaraka wa ta'ala a'lam. You see, so I just uh, mentioned all this for uh, my sister that asked me about it because I knew that there are some people who are supporting supporting this opinion um, uh, strongly. Yes. Now, uh, there are... Look, sister, let me tell you something. There are many opinions when you open the books of fiqh. Some of these opinions that you can't agree about. That's why Imam Malik said, كل منا راد ومردون عليه إلا صاحب هذا قبر صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. Of course, we don't believe that these scholars who used to do the sadl, that they did that by purpose and against the sunnah. Of course, no. We don't believe that. But we can say that they did that because they thought it's, uh, it's preferable or it's better. Or maybe they even have a, an excuse. Maybe they did that because they have an excuse. Because we don't know. Did they say that that's better or they just did it? See, there's a difference between doing something because maybe you have an excuse. Maybe your hand hurts you. Maybe you can't do the qabd. Like uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, he used to do, Abdullah ibn Umar, he used to do iqa, sit down on his, his, uh, his legs. And his legs are rosen up so he sits on them and when he uh, asked some of his children or some of his cousins to stop doing that or some of his nephews to stop doing that they told him Were you, will you do that he said I'm not like you I'm sick I'm ill uh, my legs hurt me so I can't sit down uh, so actually he's doing something and who sees and say, well, this is a sunnah because Allah and Umar did it where Abdullah bin Umar didn't do it as a sunnah, he did it because he is sick, he is ill. When we find something like that, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالْرَسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمُ الْآخِرِ When you uh, debate on something, what is the thing that uh, solves the, 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 the problem and what is the thing that, that when we discuss with each other about it, what judges us and makes this one, this part, right and this, and these guys wrong? It's the evidence. What are your evidence? When you, when you mention your evidence, that's it. You mentioned what you have to mention. Did, did you get that? From Tabi'een, they have it from the Sahaba, and the Sahaba, it's not the Hadith, but it's Amal. Well, actually, I told you, and I mentioned that the majority of people of Medina used to do Qabd, not Sadl. So where did they get that it's Amal al Medina? How can it be Amal al Medina, where the majority of the Medinians do Qabd, not Sadl? How can you mention that as sunnah, where there is nothing that supports that as sunnah? Let me tell you something more than that. Mashhur al-madhab, it's that you only raise up your hands in the beginning, Allahu Akbar, to your shoulders. The hadith that they are mentioning... Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. 
أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله yes. In this hadith that I just mentioned right now of uh, Abu Hamid Saidi, he mentions that the Sunnah is to raise up your hands in three places in the prayer. Maliki's on their mashallah, they don't say that hadith. So how can you make a hadith as a proof in something, and in the same thing in the same hadith you don't believe in it? This is how can you use the same evidence in something and believe the other thing that is inside the same hadith? You see? So, in the Maliki Madhab, the Sud is Mashur. Some say that it's Mashur. Some others say no. Al Qabd is Mashur. And they support that. The Qabd, yes, the Qabd is Mashur. Did I tell you? Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Jafar, Rahimahullah. Sayyidina Muhammad Jafar, in his book, uh, the Sabir al Wadah, he says. سبيل الواضح في أن القبض في مذهب مالك مشهور وراجح مشهور that means the majority of scholars say that it's sunnah وراجح that means وراجح that means it's supported by uh, by the sunnah it's supported by the sunnah you see طيب I think this is uh, Enough for talking about Sadl al Qabd. I don't know if you still have a question about that or you don't. Or we'll continue and go to some other. Look here what he says, Ibn Abdul Bar. Look what Ibn Abdul Bar says here. Ibn Abdul Bar says, no, no, the seven fuqaha of Medina don't say Qabd. No, they don't say Sadl, no. Look, even Aimat al-Bayt, even Aimat al-Bayt, that the Shia claim that they take their opinions from them, uh, there is no authentic narration from them that they say Sadl. All of them say Qabd too. And that's what Imam Sama'ani, which is a Zaydi scholar, he proved that by lots of uh, narrations in a, in, a, in a book that he wrote against the Zaydis. Look what here the Imam Abdul Bar says in um, in the Tamheed in Tamheed. قال رحمه الله لم تختلف الآثار عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في هذا الباب. There is no conflicts between the narrations that are referred to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in this chapter. ولا أعلم عن أحد من الصحابة في ذلك خلافا. And I don't know. And I don't know from the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, anhum, any conflict between them about this except illa shay'un ruwi an ibn Zubayr anna kana yursilu yadayhi idha salla wa qad ruwi anhu khilafuhu mimma yadullu mimma qaddamna dhikrahu anhu. He says, except Abdullah ibn Zubayr and it is narrated from him something that is against that. And it is what I mentioned before, he said. Uh, putting the right hand on the left hand, it's from the Sunnah. This is Ibn Zubayr. And this is what the majority of the Tabi'een say. And the majority of scholars, Muslim scholars, from the people of opinion and the people who follow the Athar. At-Tirmidhi says, when he mentioned, he narrated one of these ahadith, وَالْعَمَلُ عَلَى هَذَا عِنْدَ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ مِنَ الصَّحَابَةِ وَالتَّابِعِينَ وَمَنْ بَعْدَهُمْ And this is what the majority of scholars say, and do, not say, practice, from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the people who came after them. 
So this is so clear. I mean, uh, I mean, there is there is no evidence that supports any opinion that is against this opinion. So Alhamdulillah, it's so clear. I think. So uh, let us, uh, if you don't have any question about this uh, topic, let us go to uh, another topic. Is that enough for this? Okay. What are the things that are disliked in prayer? What are the things that are disliked in prayer? Qala wa karihu basmatan the prayer. Uh, can you hear? Can you hear the voice now? Oh, there's no voice. Uh huh. Now? Can you hear right now? Can you hear? Okay. He says here that the scholars, the Maliki scholars, disliked. Uh, saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the beginning of reciting Surah Al-Fatiha in prayer. Saying, A'udhu Billah, I seek refuge in the Fard Salah and the prostrating on cloth. Why are why do Maliki dislike to say A'udhu Billah min ash-Shaytan ar-Rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? And recite your surah because the Prophet وسلم, according to Anas ibn Malik and Abu Bakr and Umar, you and Uthman used to start their prayer by Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So Imam Malik derived from that that you don't read Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And if you don't read Bismillah Rahman Rahim, it's obvious that you don't even read Aurudullah Shaitan Rajim. And more than that, the Malikis don't even read the invocation that is in the beginning of the prayer so they just say Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim etc this is the mashhur of the madhab this is the mashhur of the madhab and they disliked prostrating on anything like carpets he went to pray in the house of Anas ibn Malik and his mother Anas said I went to فَعَمَدْتُ إِلَى حَصِيرٍ لِي قَدِ سْوَدَّ مِنْ طُولِ مَا لُبِسْ حصير is a kind of carpet that is made of branches or leaves or something like that from the trees so uh, he prayed on those. But he he didn't pray on carpets. When Abu Hanif al-Rumahdi came and he put his Imam Malik said take he ordered the policeman to take that guy to prison. When he came to him, he said, I'm the Rahmani. He was the greatest Imam in Iraq. So, the Imam Malik, what did I do? Imam Malik said, you did something in our... So he started weeping and crying, and he said, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. So he forgave him. So what we do nowadays in our masajid, in our houses, you find even the even a carpet on a carpet. You have a carpet, and then they ask for other carpets to pray on the carpets. Why? Why are you calling to pray on the carpets where you, actually you have a carpet? Well, they said the children here they might they might may, they might they, they might have uh, could have uh, done something. Allah, they. 
have done something that's against the sunnah because ground is pure unless you are true that and many laymen think people think a lot of think a lot of things that are unpure were actually according to the sharia they're, they're proof okay he said the fold of the turban or part of the sleeve or carrying something in in it or one's mouth yeah of course uh, when you pray on uh, the, the the your turban it's not supposed to be a huge turban it's we're talking about only small turban and and that covers your forehead but when we're talking about a big turban that makes your nose be maybe uh, or makes your head actually makes a, 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 a something between you and and your and, and the ground when you're prostrating that might nullify your prayer so when the turban is big and huge that would nullify the prayer but we're talking about something that is only small a small turban by two two circles something like that look your hand just put put it like that and and put it all, all over the ground so you're asked to put all your on the ground your hands your forehead your nose you're supposed to put it on the ground and when you pick something you pick something inside your hand your your sleeve that means you're um that means you're not you're not putting your hand on the ground because you're busy and putting something inside your mouth that means you're busy how are you going to recite how are you going to read how are you going to do a lot of things so actually that prevents you from doing a lot of things and it makes you uh reciting uh, during during the prostration or the bowing, allowing the heart to think about anything which uh, humility, which is against which is against humility towards Allah. He translated khushu by humility, well, uh, to be humble between to be humble in. Uh, in the eyes of Allah this is one of the main ideas of prayer so here we are asked to concentrate on the prayer and when you do anything else you're not constant concentrating on the prayer and you're busy and that's something that is for uh, uh, dislikes thinking of, uh, and reciting Quran in because we are asked to uh, we are asked in our bowing down to praise Allah not to recite Quran the Prophet said I am prevented from reciting Quran when I am bowing down or I am prostrating so we are asked in the sujood to to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are asked in the sujood to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is more accepted that Allah will ex accept your invocation. وعبث والالتفات والدعاء أثناء sorry وعبث والالتفات في الدعاء أثناء أثناء قراءة كذا الركعة and absent-minded play turning away from the qibla and making dua during the recitation and likewise in the bowing playing being absent well why are you praying then when you're playing your mind absent that means you're against the prayer and 
and turning away. If you turn even your legs, if you turn your chest and your legs are still towards the Qibla, your prayer is accepted. It's not nullified, but you're doing something that is disliked. But if even your legs change from the Qibla, that means your prayer is nullified. It's not accepted anymore. You have to pray again. Go and pray again. وَعَبَثٌ وَالْتِفَاتُ وَالدُّعَ أَثْنَا قِرَاءَةٍ كَذَاءِ الرَّكَعَةِ Well, we said that. The recitation. And likewise, in Bowen. تَشْبِيكُ أَوْ فَرْقَعَةُ الْأَصَابِعِ تَخَصُّرٌ تَغْمِيضُ عَيْنٍ تَابِعِ That means inter look interlooking or clacking the fingers placing one's hands on the hip when standing closing one's eyes closing one's eyes that means you are asked to not play with your hands and not being absent-minded from your prayer. So all these acts are something that you have to avoid totally. And for putting your hands here, like this, putting your hands like this, so it uh, means in, in uh, every hand, in, in uh, the right hand, in the right part of your of your belly, and the left hand in the left part of your belly, you're doing something like the Jews. You're praying like Jews praying. That's why it's disliked. That's called tahassur. Wa dhu yadi fil khasra. Al khasra is okay. Tashbiku farqa al tahassur and tahmidiyah. It's placing one's hands on the hip when standing. So. You are asked to not put your two hands in your hip when you're praying. Closing one's eyes, yeah, because you're just... When you close your eyes when you're praying, it's like you're pretending that you're you're more humble to your Lord, where actually you're just playing. Or it's kind of imitating the Jews. But if you have a real reason to do that, for example, you are in a masjid that has a lots of uh, writings in it and uh, lots of pictures and stuff like that. And you, you can't concentrate. You're just, when you stand up praying, you start looking and reading instead of concentrating on your prayer. So you're allowed to close your hand, your eyes. And sometimes you're praying in somewhere where there are women coming and going and men coming and going children coming and going and you can't concentrate on your prayer so you're allowed to close your eyes so that you can concentrate on your prayer see so these are some cases that you are allowed to concentrate concentrate on your prayer Faslun Fard Ayn and Fard Kifaya Salats okay now here He's going to talk about what are the prayers that are uh, ob obligatory. Obligatory. How do you pronounce it? One of the brothers told me that I'm pronouncing it wrong. How do you pronounce it? He says it's wrong to say obligatory. 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 So like that, obligatory, obli, obli, obligatory. Like why, like how I pronounce it, obligatory. Some people pronounce it like you pronounce it, but I'm still. Uh, yani there's a, a, a another way to pronounce it better than that way anyway obligatory obligatory anyway look here he's gonna mention and others that are not obligatory other prayers that are uh, fard kifaya 
And Faldain. There are two ways to pronounce it. Uh huh, maybe. What are these uh, prayers that some of them are Fardain, others are Fard Kifaya? Let us see these prayers. You see, we nearly finished 10 lectures and we're still in less than the half of the book. And because I know what I'm teaching, I knew that it's impossible to finish the whole poem in, in less than that. So anyway, we're, we're learning with each other, inshallah. And we ask Allah that we benefit from these lectures. Okay. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Here he says, تفكر القلبي أيوة. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد. Here he says. فصل الصلوات فرض عين وهي كفاية لميت دون مين فروضها التكبير أربع دعاء ونية سلام سر تبع وكالصلاة الغسل دفن وكف وترنك سوف عيد استسقاسنا فجر رغيبة وتقضى للزوال والفرض يقضى أبدا وبالتوال نديب نفل مطلقا وأكد وأكدت تحية ضحى تراويح تلت وقبل وتر مثل ظهر وعصر وبعد مغرب وبعد الظهر. These are kinds of prayers. Here he says, فصل, yeah, section, and the five prayers are فرض, obligatory, and the salah over the de dead person is uh, com com communal, communal, Responsibility, communal responsibility without doubts. Five prayers because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them obligatory on us, and the Prophet says that uh, told when he asked them what are the things that are I'm supposed to do he says five prayers in the night and the morning he said if I don't do anything more extra than that do I have any blame on me he says no you don't have any blame on you and he went on so happy asking Allah's mercy for the Prophet ﷺ. And he says, I won't do anything more than this nor less than that. So these are something that are, all scholars agree that there are five prayers no more that are obligatory. And it is fard kifaya, which they call here Kifaya, common responsibility for the funeral, funeral prayer. Funeral prayer, that means Salatul Janaza, if some do it, that's it. That's enough. Not everybody has to go do it. Not everybody has to. Uh, not everybody has to uh, pray on the funeral prayer if they're on are others that are going to take care of the the dead guy. Furudha. Now, funeral prayer. How how is it supposed to be? He says furudha. The obligatory things about funeral prayer is a takbiru arba'an dua nuaniyatun salam mustarin tabi'a. Its fard obligations are the takbir times, the dua. The intention and saying salam silently. These are furuduha at takbir. That means these are the four things that are pillars of Salat al Janazah according to our friends. 
So that's how you pray Janazah, pray t- four Takbirs, and between every Takbir you just invoke according to the Malikis. And others say, no, you read, no sound, no sound. Can you hear me? No sound, no sound. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, can you hear me right now? Is everything clear? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear? Okay, that good. So he says that the pillars of federal prayer is saying Allah Akbar four times, four takbirs. And, and invoking Allah for the one who died between every takbira and the, the the intention and saying salam quickly and going home. Okay? Okay, that's good. Now, what are, and saying salam, salam, assalamu alaikum, one taslima. One taslima silently, not with loud voice. And when the people hear it, they can. When they say assalam, people all start saying salam. What is for uh, kifaya? More than that, communal responsibility. He says the four obligations of the takbir four times: the dua, the intention, and the saying that salam, saying the salam silently. وَكَصَّلَاتِ الْغُسْلُ دَفْنُ وَكَفًا وَتْرُنْكُ سُوفُ نَسْتَعِيدُ نَسْتِسْقَصُنًا And like the, the salah, the ghusl, the burial of the, the inch rounding, the inch rounding, the, the corpse, are com- communal responsibilities. While the w- witr, eclip, eclipse, eid, and Eid and Salat uh, and, the, and the rain Salah are Sunnas. Okay. Now we have here washing the one who died, the same thing. Burying him, it's the same thing. Fard Kifaya. If some do, does that, that means the others are not concerned about that. Uh, covering the guy who died and what is Sunnah? Sunnah Mu'akkad actually, not only Sunnah, Sunnah, strong Sunnah. It's the witr Eclipse prayer, uh, the Eid, which uh, we have two Eids, the, two Eids, and the rain prayer, when there's a uh, there's no rain and people go go and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they need rain. Fajr and Fajr al-Raghibatun wa tuqda lil-zawal wal-fardu yuqda abadan wa bit-tawal. The Fajr is particularly desired Sunnah and can be made upright up up to the sun's zenith. However, the obligatory must be made up, however, long the day the delay and it's uh, the delay long the delay and in its order. Okay, what does this mean? Al Fajr is considered as what they call Raghiba. Raghiba is less than Sunnah Mu'akkada and higher than Mandub. They say only uh, Fajr, the two rakahs before Fajr are considered like that. And if you don't pray it in its time, you are allowed to pray it until the noon. After that, you can't pray it anymore. And you pray that as if you prayed it in its time, but it's not. That. But for the faridah, obligatory prayers, you have to pray them whenever you remember them. So it's it's always it's it never drops from you, from your responsibility. 
Uh, it is recommended to do the nafila at all times. Yeah, as more as long as more as you do nafil, you become close to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Although par- particular importance in attached to the salah of greeting, the maid morning, the maid. Wait a second. The mid morning, sorry, the mid morning salah and the tarawih. Mid morning salah. Look, there are recommended prayers are whenever you just pray for Allah, just whatever you pray. And there are strong recommended prayers like the Heath al Masjid. When you enter the masjid, never sit down unless you you pray to until you pray to rakaz. Salatul Duha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is like giving 360 charities. Taraweeh. Uh, no, sorry, sorry. Fajr. Raghiba tuqtar zu'ayya. Okay, that's a hiyatun. Duha. Yani duha. Taraweeh. It's the prayers after after the Isha until the Fajr. So it's called taraweeh and it's something that you have to take care of. Uh, the recommended, the it's uh, commended, it's recommended to to the nafila at all times. Okay, we read that. Waqabla witrin, zuhrin. Waqabla witrin mithla zuhrin asri wa baada maghribin wa baada zuhri. These are called a sunan and nawaf al rawatib sunnas that are after or before every prayer. Like what? Nafila salas are prefer, pre, pre, performed before the witr, before duhr, and before duhr, and asr, and after maghrib, and after duhr. It is permissible to pray two or four rakahs before duhr, and two or four rakahs after duhr, and two rakahs before isha, and two rakahs after maghrib. And then he prays al witr and he prays, he gets, he discusses, he, he prays witr before. And witr is very important. Witr is very important that you have to take care of. It's nearly obligatory, but it's not obligatory, but it's nearly obligatory. And you are asked to pray before it two rakahs after Aisha. And uh, al-asr, you can pray two or four rakahs before it, and after maghrib, two rakahs, and after al-dhuhr, as I mentioned for you. Alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu ala mawlana rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala, and this is enough for this day. Thank you very much for being with us. Alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu ala rasulullah. Okay, see you later, inshallah. Next, uh, in the beginning of the week, bihawallah ta'ala. Arakallahu fikum. Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.